Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I want to talk to you about how to make the HyperX Duocast sound better. This is already a pretty interesting and good quality microphone, but here I'm going to show you a number of different things that you can do to make it sound even better, and to improve it in a variety of ways. Some of these are free and easy to do, and they're not obvious once you first get the microphone, and so with these tips you'll be able to improve the quality of the sound. I'm going to show you software that you can install, tweaks that you can make within Windows, and also adjustments that you can make in general. Now I will note that the best way to get it sounding good is to get it off this stand. Now this is a good stand and it has a shock mount obviously attached to it and you are able to adjust it in a position, put it on your desk and use it for good voice capture if you're close enough. But getting it off the stand and onto a boom arm can make a big difference because it means that you can turn the gain down. At its simplest level, one of the easiest ways to make any mic sound better is to turn the gain down and get it closer to your mouth. This helps to eliminate background noise, but it also means that you can really focus your voice into the microphone and get good quality out of it. It's easy enough to take off the stand as well. You can see that it basically has a little screw system that holds it in place to the clip, and then it comes off complete with its shock mount, and you can see that system there. And you also have in the box the little adapter that allows you to basically then screw that in in place of the stand and then connect that up and then that will mount on any boom arm that has the simple threading system on it that will allow you to mount it to a boom arm with ease so basically all you've got to do is pop it off a stand and pop this in its place don't lose this adapter because if you do then you won't be able to use it on a boom arm if you're swapping between the two for some reason and obviously also you need to make sure you're reusing the parts that were used to install it on the stand now, this is obviously an extra expense, does require you to purchase an extra boom arm and get a good quality one can make a difference. You can buy cheap ones, but my experience is better to get a good quality one that won't allow for a lot of knock sounds and noises, but is easy to adjust because you also need to be able to adjust the microphone into a position where you can get it close to you. But you can see now we have that stand in place. We can then basically connect it up to the boom arm. I've got a Rode PSA One Plus that I'm using here for demonstration purposes. It doesn't require anything else extra. It basically just screws in and tightens up. And then you need to adjust it so that you can talk into the front of it because that is where the sound is being picked up from. This microphone has two polar patterns, which I'll talk about more in a minute. But basically, you switch between those. One mode is basically talking into the front of it, and the other one is sort of picking up the surrounding environmental noise. That's one of the first steps that you should do, but the next one is to adjust sound in Windows and to download software that will allow you to install firmware updates. So one of the first things you should do is head over to the Microsoft Store if you're on Windows and download the HyperX Ingenuity software. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This software allows you to do several things to give you control over the microphone. But as you can see, once you first launch it, it reminds you to install the audio drivers. Now this is a plug and play microphone that it will work without this process. So it does certainly capture audio without doing these steps. But what I found is it will improve the quality of the sound in a few different ways. And actually the features, because I found initially the touch to mute capabilities didn't work that well. Now it goes through two processes when you install it. First of all, installing the drivers, and you can see at that stage it happening here. And it takes a little while. You'll also notice in the bottom right that it's suggesting rebooting, and I would suggest doing that. So go in and reboot your PC, and then you'll need to go through the update firmware settings. So basically reboot, restart, and then update firmware going through the same steps so launch ingenuity and click to update and go through these steps here and then just wait for it to finish updating obviously don't unplug it or anything crazy like that while it's doing that now these two things will help improve the quality of the sound but there's more that we can do because the ingenuity software has a few different flexible options to it as well so you can tweak things and improve the audio as well. And I'm going to show you that now. But before we get started with that, one of the things that I recommend doing is going to your sound setting. So right click on the little speaker icon in the bottom of Windows and then click on sound settings. Once you're in there, make sure that you have speakers HyperX Duocast and microphone HyperX Duocast selected. I'm assuming here that you're using the 3.5 mil connection plugged into the back of the microphone so that you can mic monitor, which allows you to hear the audio of the microphone as you're talking into it. 
This is important because it allows you to hear what's going through the microphone and get an idea of the quality. You can also use this to listen to your music through Spotify, game audio, whatever else, and it makes things a lot simpler if it's all run through that one system. Once you've done that, scroll down to sound settings, so click on more sound settings, and then you need to find the recording tab, and then look for microphone HyperX Geocast. Like basically click on that, then click on properties. Then you can go in and you can adjust the levels, the decibel level, and I'll talk about that in a second at the hardware level and software level within Ingenuity. And then you want to make sure you're selecting the default format. So go into this drop down and select two channel 24 bit 96,000 hertz studio quality. Doing that will ensure that you have a really good capture quality of the sound and to give you the best possible experience. Then just click OK. And the other thing you want to do is you want to go into playback settings. And if you're using the Geocast as both your monitoring and a microphone, click on there and click set as default communication device. Then we launch HyperX Ingenuity. Now this gives you control over a number of different things. You'll notice in the bottom left down here, you have a number of different settings. First of all, I want to talk about the polar pattern. Polar Pattern has two modes on this microphone. Now you can access this either via this software or by pressing the button on the back, which controls the volume, which is a volume dial, which is for the gain, so that adjusts the gain up and down. And you can push that in and it switches between the two polar patterns. You'll notice that I have it set to cardioid pickup pattern at the moment, which is best for podcast streaming voiceovers and instruments. You can also set to omnidirectional, which is best for multi-person podcasts and conference calls. You'll notice immediately switching between the two that it gives quite a hollow sound by comparison. Also, if you use this yourself, you may find you pick up a lot more surrounding environmental noise. In my room, it picks up a lot more sound from my PC in terms of the fan noise. And this is really prominent in a number of different ways. So if you're using it like I am, when you're doing voiceovers or you're streaming or whatever else, you want to be in cardioid pickup button, talking close and into the front of the microphone to give you the best results. Now you'll notice that I have my gain set to around 53. As I said earlier, what you want to do if possible is to get it onto a boom arm, get it as close to your mouth as possible, and then get the gain down low. The lower you put the gain, the less chance there is of picking up background noise. If I adjust the gain upwards, I can hear myself more and you can probably hear me more, but what it will do is it will also pick up a little bit more background noise. Now, if you turn on the mic monitoring at the bottom, that will allow you to hear your own voice in the microphone and hear the sound that the microphone's picking up. So you can then work out what the microphone can hear. I'm going to show you in a second, though, that this isn't always perfect. And actually, it's better to use other sources so you can see what audio is being picked up and then compensate for it. Now, you'll also notice there are some other settings here, filters. So you have a high pass filter. If I turn this on, this adjusts the audio of the capture. You can see that I'm not quite as bassy now, and it washes some of that out. I don't think this sounds as good personally. Then there's an AI noise reduction. This, again, also changes the sound. You'll notice there's also a limiter. The limiter will stop it if from clipping. So if you're shouting or you're really loud, you're really vocal on your microphone, if you put the limiter on, that should stop it from peaking and making horrible noises when you get to the top. The AI noise reduction obviously it uses intelligence to eliminate a lot of background noise and you can turn it up so basically go through these things here so i'd recommend playing around with these settings on the ai noise reduction and seeing what works for you however as you'll hear it is a lot nicer sounding without it on so my first port of call if you are noticing there is a problem with the gain picking up too much surrounding noise is to turn the gain down so drop the gain down further get the mic closer to you and then you should be able to compensate that way and adjust it. So and another thing I want to demonstrate is to use Streamlabs or OBS. Now these are both free softwares. Even if you're not streaming, these are handy for working out what, whether you've got the microphone set up correctly. So download one of them and then click on the little cog icon on the bottom left and then click on audio and then click to find your microphone. So in this case, we're going to use the HyperX Geocast. What this does is it then puts a little gauge here so you can see what sort of levels that's set to. And basically what you want to do is make sure that when you're talking, 
it's going into this sort of green and yellow zone and doesn't ever go into the red. But what you can also do is you can use this to work out whether you've got the gain too high on the microphone. So as I said already, there's a dial at the rear that you can turn to adjust the gain level. So it's the volume of the mic is picking up. The higher that is, the louder you will be, the more you'll be able to be heard, but also the more background noise it picks up. So one of the things I've found is if you turn it up, so if you tweak it, basically roll that wheel. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, you watch the levels in the mixer down here and you'll see that they'll slowly increase even when I'm not talking. And you can see from that, when I turned it up, you could hear the sound, you could hear background noise a bit more, you could hear the fan noise, you could hear the like whirring sounds in the room and other noises that you didn't want. Now you might not be able to hear that through the mic monitoring, and you probably can't hear it without making recordings, let's say with OBS or Streamlabs or with Audacity or some other recording software. You might not even notice that the noise is being picked up like that. But you can see it, so this is one of the good ways of doing it, seeing the levels, seeing where that sound is. So if I just stop talking now, you'll notice the levels don't pop up anymore. It's completely flatlined. There's nothing showing down here, which shows that you have it set to the right place in the gain. So I'd recommend playing around with that and adjusting it. So you can do it either via the software. So if I turn the gain up here, So if I click between the levels on the gain on the left, you'll see the levels changing on the right. There is actually an indicator on here on the HyperX software, but it doesn't really show when there's no noise, as in when you're not talking. You can see the levels on here when I'm talking, but it doesn't show it in the same way that Streamlabs does. Now there are a number of other things that you can do with Streamlabs if you are finding problems. You can add filters, so you can add filters to it. And there are a lot of different things you can do with noise suppression filters, for example. So you can change and add noise suppression filters. You can also add a noise gate and you can tweak these. There are other people that have done a lot more in-depth videos that I could possibly do on this. But basically it's all about changing these settings to customize the sound to your own personal environment, your voice and other things. But well, those are some of the things that you can do. Obviously, if you find you're struggling, you can also turn on the high pass filter or the AI noise cancellation in order to deal with that. So I wanted to finish up by showing you how I've got it set up so you can see that. And you see the distance is just about a fist's width away from it. And as you saw, the game was selected. Now, quick note, if you don't have that software, if you aren't able to access it, you can still tweak things on the thing so you can see at the back there's where the volume wheel is and you can switch between modes by pressing the button so this switches between the two different modes so you can adjust those with ease and obviously just getting it into the right place but the important point is to talk into the front of it when you've got it set on the cardioid pickup pattern so you need to position your mic arm so that the HyperX logo is at the front because if you talk around this side for example you can see that it doesn't really pick it up very well. And the closer you get, the richer it sounds. Obviously, you are in danger of it picking up some of the p -p 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 sounds a bit more. But it does have a built-in pop filter, so it does still sound fantastic that way. But basically, just adjust the gain. Now, one thing to bear in mind is the mic monitoring doesn't seem to pick up all the sound, I find. So if you do turn up the gain, you might not notice some of the bad noises that are going in. So just... A basic level, get it on a boom arm, get it close to you, put the gain down, and then you should find it's a lot better. This has been the Provoke Prawn. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and thanks very much for watching.
This has been The Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.